This is the most advanced aircraft carrier ever built and is also the largest aircraft carrier in the world. This is the first time in the history of the U.S. Navy that the most expensive aircraft carrier has been built, whether from military equipment or in terms of scale, all of which are a great work of art. Construction lasted 13 years, making it the ultimate development of naval technology. The cost of building the entire aircraft carrier is up to 14 billion U.S. dollars. This is the first U.S. ship equipped with a fifth-generation stealth fighter, also the first ship of the Ford class. At the same time, this is also the 11th aircraft carrier of interest to the U.S. Navy and will certainly become the U.S. military's newest model, the core of its maritime combat power. Many high technologies are applied on the ship, mainly including integrated electric motors and electromagnetic launch technology, becoming a representative of the 21st century maritime power. Although the new technology may not work immediately, we know that diving into this issue will be a great challenge. Let's take a look inside the Ford today. See how advanced the USS Ford is, what life is like on an aircraft carrier, and just how big the aircraft carrier project is. In July 2017, at Naval Station Norfolk, Virginia, this $14 billion super aircraft carrier was finally launched. Gerald R. Ford, the entire line of Ford-class aircraft carriers, is up to 333 meters long. 40.8 meters wide and 83 meters high. The standard displacement is 100,160 tons. The full load displacement is 112,000 tons, equivalent to the weight of 400 Statues of Liberty. Gray paint was used to spray the entire hull with up to 760,000 liters of paint, enough to repaint the entire White House 350 times. Today, the aircraft carrier officially joined the Navy marking more than 40 years since the U.S. military designed a new aircraft carrier. This is a state-of-the-art warship design that meets the needs of the 21st century Navy, carrying more aircraft and weapons than ever before. The carrier has four electronic catapults, an advanced landing interception system, and primary defensive armament consisting of two improved Sea Sparrow missiles, eight pillar catapults, two anti-aircraft missile launchers, and three six-tube MK-15 20mm deep assault guns. In addition, the ship is also equipped with a 12.7mm heavy machine gun and a torpedo system. The transport support system also uses new technology, including fully automated trucks, automatic bomb-hanging robots, and automatic ammunition depots. The Ford carrier also plans new weapons concepts, including railguns, high-energy lasers, and high-energy rays. On the flight deck, the Ford carrier is also further optimized, providing a new operating system for follow-on equipment, strong protection. In addition, the ship is also equipped with two new pressurized water nuclear reactors, expected to operate for 50 years, reaching a level of durability along with the fleet. This is very important for aircraft carriers that need to travel long distances, helping to avoid the need to exchange materials back and forth and frequent overhauls. This also resulted in increased service life of the USS Ford, improved attendance rates, higher energy density, lower cycle capacity, and simplified structure. Super aircraft carriers are the ultimate symbol of military power, are mobile seaports, provide door-to-door -door operational convenience, and can be transported by land and sea, reaching most strategic locations in the world. In the vast ocean, the combat power of an aircraft carrier battle group is unparalleled. Carrier strike groups include aircraft carriers, cruisers, destroyers, and submarines, all of which are supplied by supply and fuel support ships. Cruisers are among the Navy's largest warships, each weighing 10,000 tons and equipped with a variety of weapons and equipment. The destroyers of the fast combat group, characterized by mobility and efficiency, are armed with powerful Tomahawk land-based cruise missiles, which can carry a warhead weighing 450 kilograms and travel 2,800 kilometers. On the outskirts of the strike battle group, nuclear submarines are responsible for hunting enemy ships and submarines, carrying Mark 48 heavy torpedoes, which can split enemy ships in half. All supplies for the carrier group were assigned to supply ships, which provided food, fuel, and ammunition. At the heart of the carrier strike group is the aircraft carrier, carrying high-tech carrier-based aircraft worth $3.5 billion. 
In particular, the USS Ford aircraft carrier is equipped with the most advanced aircraft. The overall performance of the F-35C stealth fighter is world-class, with a combat radius exceeding 1,000 kilometers. With the support of the aircraft carrier USS Ford, the U.S. Navy has regained its long-lost depth of attack. During World War II, the United States built a total of 155 aircraft carriers, but all aircraft carriers combined were not as powerful as today's aircraft carriers. In 1955, after World War II, the newly designed Forrestal-class aircraft carrier became the United States Navy's first super aircraft carrier, setting the standard for subsequent American aircraft carriers. All of our first carriers were over 75,000 tons, which is the definition of a super carrier. This is also the first ship designed to carry nuclear weapons. The next four Kitty Hawk-class aircraft carriers were based on the Forrestal-class followed by the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Enterprise and 10 Nimitz-class aircraft carriers delivering U.S. Navy air power around the world. As we all know, the U.S. has the largest number of aircraft carriers in the world and is also the country that spends the most on aircraft carriers. The high cost of aircraft carrier maintenance is reflected not only in its own machinery and equipment, but also in a large number of management personnel and living expenses. Can you believe that a cruise can cost $100 million? Let's explore life on an aircraft carrier. Before the horses moved, food and grass went first. Rich dishes and delicious desserts are a great way to lift your spirits. U.S. Navy aircraft carriers usually sail for three months. Food alone costs more than $20 million U.S. dollars, equivalent to 150 million yuan. Some people will certainly question whether that is true. Public information shows that U.S. naval ships, including Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, are equipped with 90 chefs, providing meals for nearly 5,000 people. Every time they go to the beach, they have to prepare nearly 1.6 tons of chicken wings, ensuring that everyone can express their freedom. The aircraft carrier USS Enterprise has been retired, but data shows that there are more than 5,000 people on board consuming more than 180 kilograms of flour and more than 50 kilograms of sugar every day. Americans love to eat sweets, so this data is not surprising. Of course, there are many other ingredients consumed. Each carrier eats 3 tons of bacon, 60,000 potatoes, more than 10 tons of burgers, and 2 tons of hot dogs every month. In addition, the food standard is also the best, equivalent to the level of a middle-class American family even some star hotels cannot compare ham, steak, fried chicken, lobster, and many types of vegetables and fruits are available. When the weather is nice, you can also have a barbecue on the deck. Because the food is so delicious, it is said that in the U.S. Navy, 70% of male soldiers and 45% of female soldiers have excess weight, of which 6% are even severely obese. In addition, France is one of the few European and American countries with a deep passion for cuisine. On the aircraft carrier de Gaulle, all the chefs graduated from the Naval Culinary Department in Toulon. Their cooking skills can be compared to Michelin chefs, certainly worse than anything else, not to mention dishes like cheese, steak, seafood, and bread in the many different flavors available. During the holidays, traditional French delicacies such as liver pâté and grilled escargot will be served. When it comes to food, India is not lagging behind. In their carrier restaurant, the food is mainly curry-flavored, such as chicken curry, fish curry, goat curry, etc. Although the appearance is not very beautiful, it is still a hundred times better than Indian Army food. It can be seen that the aircraft carrier powers are very serious about food issues. But life on an aircraft carrier isn't just about good food, it's also about fitness and entertainment. After busy work hours, everyone will happily show off what they have accomplished, from singing, dancing, to high altitude diving projects. This type of outdoor exercise makes one's heart pound when seen. The soldiers stood on the deck of an aircraft carrier, tens of meters high, jumping straight into the open sea. They also held fireworks shows at night, countless bullets tearing through the dark sky. The standard of living is high, but this is only the tip of the iceberg of aircraft carrier maintenance costs. During the Cold War, the US Navy had at least 15 aircraft carriers. But after the Cold War ended in 1993, the Forrestal-class aircraft carriers were retired, and the number of U.S. aircraft carriers also decreased sharply. 
Since the lifespan of an aircraft carrier is essentially 50 years, the maintenance costs in the later stages are truly staggering numbers. By 2008, the U.S. Congress approved the construction of a completely new super aircraft carrier, the Ford class. The Ford aircraft carrier, named after President Gerald Ford, was built in Newport News, Virginia. This is also one of two places in the world it is possible to build aircraft carriers powered by nuclear energy. This large shipyard covers an area of 2.2 million square meters with more than 20,000 employees working in shifts. 70% of American warships were born here. Building the core of the aircraft carrier, the shipyard has dry ship number. 12,670 meters long and 76 meters wide, which is also the largest dry ship in the Western Hemisphere. In November 2009, Construction of the Ford aircraft carrier began here. The first part to be built was the ship's keel or bottom, with 1,800 tons of welded metal, 5,000 kilometers of cable, and 90,000 pipes. This ship has millions of parts requiring a lot of materials, much of which comes from more than 5,000 suppliers in 48 states across the United States. The most used thing is steel, and this is also the largest steel processing factory in the world, with an area larger than 10 football fields. The mill had been in operation since the 1880s and was improved over the years to process the steel needed for the Ford aircraft carrier. One of the most important pieces of equipment is a giant 5,000-ton heavy-duty press used to make tiny holes in steel plates, helping to tie naval aircraft to the deck of an aircraft carrier. In total, more than 7,000 steel wire nests were used to stabilize the aircraft. All of this equipment is designed specifically for the aircraft carrier USS Ford. As each steel plate is completed, it is moved to the shipyard's roller area, where workers weld different plate steel parts to form individual rooms, which are then combined into larger modules. Ford's modules are larger and heavier than previous carriers. A large module can consist of 20 to 40 compartments, and once completed, it is equipped with machinery, pipes, electrical components, and other equipment. The modules are then transported by super elevators, each at least the size of a house, with a load capacity of 80 to 900 tons. Construction time for a single module can last from two months to a year. The final step is to assemble the large modules into a complete ship. One of the key moments during construction was raising the 932-ton ship stern, which consists of more than 30 modules and took more than 80,000 formulas to build. Inside the stern of the ship are operating rooms, fuel distribution rooms, and storage rooms. To complete this work, they used a special crane called Big Blue, the symbol of the shipyard. This crane is 71 meters high, weighs 4,500 tons, and is the largest crane in the Western Hemisphere. It can lift the ship's stern and place it on large steel columns on the ground. By 2013, construction of the Ford aircraft carrier was 96% complete. This is the second of three searches for the Ford-class aircraft carrier, with the second carrier, USS John F. Kennedy, also having begun cutting steel. However, the U.S. Congress discussed the Ford aircraft carrier being $1 billion over budget, and they needed to understand why the Navy could not control costs in this program. By October 2013, the construction project reached its most important milestone. Water flooded the dry shipping business. President Ford's daughter, Susan, helped with the final checks before opening dry ship valve number 12 and pumping in 100 million gallons of seawater in less than a day. This is the first time the U.S. Navy's new class of aircraft carriers has emerged. A month later, the christening was held, and the aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford was officially named. The Ford was then moved to the other side of the shipyard to complete the final phase of testing. However, the biggest obstacle facing the aircraft carrier is the integration of the new technologies loaded onto it. While the U.S. is spending a lot of money to build aircraft carriers, China is actively developing new weapons to destroy aircraft carriers. The most dangerous is the Dong Fong, 21 anti-ship missile, which can fly more than 16,000 kilometers at a speed 10 times the speed of sound, taking only a few minutes to combine aircraft carriers and aircraft worth 3 billion USD into ashes. This makes people ask, are aircraft carriers really obsolete? Carrier advocates believe that these doubters do not fully understand the defensive capabilities of the new class of aircraft carriers.
the Ford aircraft carrier is equipped with two types of missiles, which can easily shoot down enemy missiles or aircraft. If enemy fire overcomes the first countermeasures system, they also face the carrier's weapon handling system, which can fire 4,500 armor-piercing rounds per minute. In the future, defense will be even tighter. With the U.S. Navy developing a new weapon that combines six high-intensity laser beams into a powerful energy beam that can destroy ship sensors and detonate explosives on enemy ships. In addition, electromagnetic guns are also being developed, replacing gunpowder with electromagnetic thrusters, helping bullets move faster than the speed of sound. The most advanced nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, USS Ford, has an island that is less than half the size of a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier and is located closer to the stern of the ship. This helps increase the forward flight deck area to more than 2,000 square meters, allowing to increase the number of parked aircraft by 33%. On the flight deck, the electromagnetic launch system and advanced landing interception system are the most prominent features. The electromagnetic launch system is the first new design in more than 50 years, replacing the traditional steam launcher. It uses electromagnetic force to push the launching aircraft off the deck, reducing stress and wear on the fuselage, helping the aircraft operate longer. The aircraft carrier USS Ford is a symbol of U.S. military power, with the ability to deploy fighter jets at any time around the world. It is not only a powerful combat tool, but also an incredible technological achievement, demonstrating the U.S. Navy's pioneering work in the 21st century. The aircraft carrier, USS Gerald R. Ford, is not only an incredible technological achievement, but also a symbol of the strength and innovation of the U.S. Navy. With multi-mission combat capabilities, advanced technological systems, and outstanding defense capabilities, this aircraft carrier will continue to play an important role in maintaining peace and stability globally. Although there are still many challenges ahead, the Ford-class aircraft carrier has opened a new era for the U.S. Navy, affirming America's position as the world's leading power at sea.